This is college football on ABC Sports. Don't look now, but Bobby Bowden's Seminoles are back in the hunt for another ACC title. Winners of three in a row, Florida State's offense is on a roll, led by quarterback Chris Ricks and big play receivers Javon Walker and Tallman Gardner. Former longtime Seminoles assistant Chuck Amato brings NC State into Tallahassee with his own playmakers, quarterback Phillip Rivers, running back Ray Robinson, and Buckus Award semifinalist LaVar Fisher, the ACC's leading tackler. It's the protege taking on the master in Tallahassee next on ABC Sports. And a great look down on an absolutely gorgeous Saturday afternoon in November as we welcome you to Dope Campbell Stadium here in Tallahassee where the Seminoles have never lost an ACC game. Today, the number 10 team in the country playing host to the Wolfpack of NC State. And hey, hi, everybody. I'm Terry again. And NC State under Chuck Amato comes in trying to win for the third consecutive game. They are one win overall away from that magic number of six to become bowl eligible. In terms of Bobby Bowden in Florida State, well, they're on a roll as of late. They have absolutely turned things around. They're in a position now to win their 10th consecutive ACC championship and earn a bid to one of the BCS Bowls. Welcome in my partner this afternoon, the former New York Giant, Mike Mayock. And Mike, what he's been able to do here in the last three weeks, Bobby Bowden, I'm talking about the Seminoles, they look like the, the Florida State of old. Yeah, and they really turned it around, in my opinion, in the last four minutes of the first half against Maryland. Quarterback Chris Ricks had been effective all season long, took a tremendous shot to his jaw right there. Had to leave the football game, take stitches. Maryland scores 14-0 late in the half. Ricks re-enters the game four consecutive passes, including this completion to Tolman Gardner, 14-7. Next series, quarterback rolls out. Michael Boltware steps in front, not only creates the turnover, but also a touchdown. It's 14-14. The place is rocking. Ricks last minute in the first half, touchdown Gardner and Terry. Instead of 14-0 deficit, all of a sudden it's a 21-14 halftime lead. And let me tell you something, they're back and the Knowles are for real. What about NC State now? You've got a guy, a quarterback there, Phillip Rivers, who was the ACC Rookie of the Year last season. He's not putting up those same numbers this season, but when you talk to the NC State coaches, they say he's really grown in terms of leadership. Yeah, he has, and it's a different look for Florida State after two consecutive weeks of a rushing quarterback. Consummate pocket passer, 14 touchdowns against only five INTs. However, the key may be today with his tailback, Ray Robinson. 33 receptions this year, two consecutive 100-yard games. Terry, I really believe if they're going to compete with Florida State today, Ray Robinson needs to make some big plays. Well, it's homecoming weekend in more than one way. Chuck Amato coming home. He spent 18 years on the sidelines as an assistant coach to Bobby Bowden. Now he's the head coach of NC State. The Wolfpack and the Seminoles next. Hey, Hallie Eisenberg, drinking a Pepsi. Actually, this isn't a Pepsi. It's new Pepsi Twist with lemon. And I'm not Hallie Eisenberg. I'm Hallie Berry. Drinking Pepsi Twist. Well, it's not exactly Pepsi Twist. It's Diet Pepsi Twist. And I'm not exactly Hallie Berry. You know. I'm Barry Boswick. Who is Barry Boswick? Like twists? Try new Pepsi Twist in regular and diet. A lemon twist on that great Pepsi taste. Uh, after Dad's stroke, he had to go into a nursing home. Well, it was okay. It was nearby. Yeah, but it wasn't like home. Yeah. After a couple of months, we could bring him here and take care of him. He likes it better here. Right, Dad? Food's better. Flexible benefits for ongoing care from Mutual of Omaha. Social life is not much. Helping families take care of one another for over 90 years. been some cookies you left, Santa. I didn't leave them cookies. I left them cheese. Ah, the power of cheese. Juice Road, validating tires. BF Goodrich tires with traction advantage. Approved. 
For control you can feel. BF Goodrich Tires, take control. Here in Italy, there's a place where the chicken marsala is so good you never forget it. And now, Chef Neri has taught our Olive Garden chefs the secrets of her recipe so they can make it for you tonight. Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Back at Dope Campbell Stadium, Florida State taking the field here 39 0 over the years in ACC play at home. It's Bobby Bowden's club. They come in 6 and 2 overall this season, 5 and 1 in the ACC tied, of course, with the Maryland Terrapins at the top. NC State will certainly play a role in who wins the ACC championship. They've got the Seminoles today, and they've also got the Turks to close out the ACC season. Chuck Amato back in Tallahassee for the first time, his second year as the head coach at NC State. They played Florida State last year in Raleigh, but he spent 18 years here. And Mike not only has a daughter who lives here, but he's got two homes and a condo still here in Tallahassee. Yeah, and the daughter you referenced also married a former Florida State football player, center Jared Morris. So the ties to the community are more than just bricks and sticks. They're family. An emotional weekend. He, he joked about it the other day, saying you might get off the bus and walk to the wrong locker room and maybe the wrong side of the football field. But uh, once, of course, the football game starts, all of that's out the window. And Bobby Bowden, on the other hand, used to those emotional games last week. Bowden Bowl three, of course, with Tommy and Clemson. And, uh, and he'll say the same thing. You know, he, he wants to beat you as badly as any other game, whether he's up against his son, whether he's up against an old assistant coach or what. Yeah, there's no question. It's interesting, though. I, I think it's a lot more emotional for Bobby to play against Tommy. Because as he told us yesterday, you lose, job, you, you lose games as a football coach, you can lose your job. And uh, Bobby takes that very seriously. A little easier today against Chuck. 26 years as the head coach of the Florida State Seminoles. He has never lost a homecoming game in 25 of those here in town. Florida State won the toss. They deferred to the second half. So. It'll be NC State getting the ball first here in Tallahassee on what's just a perfect Saturday afternoon. Great look down at Dope Campbell Stadium. The Goodyear blimp. Stars and stripes high above. Two losses earlier in the season for Florida State with what is a very young club and of course a red shirt freshman starting at quarterback in Chris Ricks. But the loss, a shocker to North Carolina, 41 to 9, and then the Miami loss. But this has been a different team in the last three weeks. Yeah, I, I really like the, liking them back to their vertical pass game is just as good as it was in 93 or 99. Jesse Stein, the sophomore out of St. Petersburg, will kick it away. Lamont Reed and Greg Golden. And we're underway in Tallahassee. Golden, two yards deep, is going to bring it back out for the Wolfpack. Across the 20 and up to the 25 yard line. And that's where the pack will start the opening series. Josh Charles in on this stop. And the Wolfpack 3-3 three and three in the ACC. And overall, 5-3 and three as you look at Phillip Rivers, the ACC Rookie of the Year last season. 62% of his passes completed this year. Third in the ACC in terms of yardage. They'll bring it up to the line of scrimmage, first and ten. Jericho Cotteri split to the near side. They fake the reverse. There goes Ray Robinson, who's got a big hole on the near sideline. And across the 45 to the 47-yard line goes Robinson. They'll move the chains. Michael Bulware in on the stop, a gain of 23. The offensive line for NC State is not a big one. They only average about 279. Chris Colmer has been the most consistent at right tackle. Keegan Ware back after two broken legs. Backs and receivers. Robinson as effective catching the ball as he is running the ball. Ryan Peterson, the number one receiver, but really right. One of the best tight ends you're going to see in college football. Yeah, and you'll enjoy him today, folks. They line him up all over the field. Flex him, split him, great hands. First and 10 at the 47. Autry in motion to the far side. Now the shotgun is Rivers. Over the middle is wide open, complete, and then he just gets nailed by Bradley Jennings. Autry hung on, though. Defensive line for Florida State. Maybe the best part of this defense, especially at the tackle spots. Humble and Dockett. Dockett is so active. Pope, Jennings, and Bullware. Bradley Jennings really recruited by Chuck Amato at Florida State. Samuels and Tatum getting a start 
at the cornerback spot for Rufus Brown. Quarterback split out. Now they're going to get a direct snap. Olin had him. Takes it. Rolls out. Throws. Peterson follows. Cut. Inside the 20. Peterson all the way down to the nine-yard line. Brian Peterson, the junior out of Clinton, North Carolina, and a gain of 31. And, and think about what they've done the first three plays of the game. Great game plan by Amato. They come out the first play, fake the reverse. Now they come in on the third play. They split quarterback wide. Owen Hannum, the backup quarterback, takes a direct snap, completes the pass to Cotchery. And I have to tell you, Terry, three plays consecutive. you got to love the game plan by Amato. Now he's got the Knolls back on their heels already early in the first quarter. So you wonder what tricks Chuck Amato had for his old mentor? Well, we've seen him already. Phillip Rivers, though, back in at quarterback out of the shotgun now. Throws behind the oh. intended receiver, almost picked off. Troy Graham, the redshirt freshman out of Miami, had it, lost it. Looked for a moment like Kendall Pope might have it. Now, it's interesting, when you talk to Bobby Bowden about this NC State team, he really focused in on Rivers. He said that his release was as quick as anybody his, he could remember outside of Dan Marino. That's pretty good company right there. Yeah, I'm not trying to put the two in the same boat, but let me tell you something. He can get rid of the football. Owen Hannum now split. The backup quarterback, they're moving around. Put him in a lot of different spots. Coach Ray Jackson. Fumble in the end zone. NC State. Derek Green comes up with it, and that's a touchdown for the Wolfpack. <laughs> what a way to score your first six of the ball game. That is amazing. Center Derek Green. How many times do you think he's done that, Terry? Another fake reverse. This is just a little guard trap up inside. Jackson gets hit, fumbles the football. It's wide open. You think you got a shot at it? Nope. Center Derek Green gets it. Adam Piker on for the extra point. The sophomore out of Wadesboro up and through the uprights. So the pack taking the opening kickoff and driving from their own 24 all the way down to the end zone and scoring on an unusual play. 7-0 NC State early here in Tallahassee. What would you do if someone passed you the keys to a Pontiac Grand Am for a week? Now I'm getting psyched. Oh, oh my god! How do you feel? So excited. Gonna grab me. This state number three, right? I'm telling everybody for the rest of my life about this. So what would you do with the Pontiac Grand Am? Tell us at Pontiac.com. You gotta have fun. A little bit of celebrating does not bother me. These are great athletes playing the game of football. That's a celebration. That's fun. That's because you ain't got no rhythm, man. <laughs> it's about individuality, Chris. It's called professional football. Act like a professional. Stop right. talking about professional and organized. They're kids. Let the kids have some fun. Well, I'll show you some fun. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> NFL Countdown, Sundays, 11 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. You're looking for one person. One person who can point to solutions instead of pointing fingers. I'm Dell Enterprise, servers, storage, and premier services. And when they build me, they build a central knowledge base. So I not only have one person with all the answers, I have thousands. Premier Enterprise Services. Total accountability on site, online, and on the phone. Easy as Dell. Dell Power Edge servers use Intel Pentium 3 Xeon processors. What would you do if someone passed you the keys to a Pontiac Grand Prix for a week? I'm out, man. Let's go. I'm out to see the world. San Francisco, here we go. Are we having fun yet? Doesn't take much to have fun, does it? <laughs> it's like riding on a surfboard. You're going to have to call me Dixie if I wear this. All right, Dixie. I can smell the salt water from here. Give us a swell, baby. So what would you do with the Pontiac Grand Prix? Tell us at Pontiac.com. There's some good surf out there. The champs track down the Titans in their first meeting. Now Tennessee is looking for payback. Ravens, Titans, round two. Monday Night Football at 9 Eastern on ABC. Well, the key to this play, aside from the great fumble recovery by Derek Green, is the right guard, Keegan Weir, collapses the entire side of the Florida State defense. Fumble into the end zone. You got a hustling center, Derek Green, down the field. And Terry, we got a football game. 7-0 NC State. 
And they move the football all the way down the field against the defense as you look at Grafonso Thorpe and P.K. Sam back deep waiting for Florida State. But uh, a defense, the Seminoles, that has given up 58 points in their last two games. So the offense is clicked, but they're giving up a lot of points defensively. There's Thorpe from his own three. Gets outside briefly and then run out of bounds at the 24. Corey Dawson ran him out there and some extracurricular afterward. So Florida State will take over on their first possession of the afternoon. Out at the 24-yard line, Chris Ricks, the redshirt freshman out of Santa Margarita, California. The struggles early, but then in the last three weeks, last two weeks actually, nine touchdown passes in two games and 719 yards. Greg Jones, the lone setback, getting the start today, and he is a low. Ricks on the roll, looking, throwing, complete at the 41-yard line. Javon Walker, the senior out of Lafayette, Louisiana, on the catch, and a gain of 17. Offensive line for Florida State playing very well as of late, especially Brett Williams, who's been dominant. Two-time All-ACCer. The backs and receivers for the Seminoles. Jones getting the start. Nick Maddox is banged up. He's got a bad ankle. We may or may not see him this afternoon. Bell, Walker, very effective the last couple of weeks, especially. Margaret Donaldson, the tight end. He's getting the signal in from the sidelines, changing the play. First and 10 from the 41. Greg Jones looks for room. Nothing doing over the left side. Julius Patterson on the 32 initially on the hit. Defense for NC State. Corey Smith has caused six fumbles this year. George Anderson maybe a bit undersized at that other defensive end spot, but very active. Burnett Fisher. Very good and experienced linebackers. Top two tacklers in the ACC. Marcus Hudson with a brother on the Florida State side this afternoon. We'll have more on that. But this is a, a secondary for NC State that will definitely be tested today. That's with two, two freshmen on the corner. Second and nine. Ricks, the straight drop. Uh, time initially, but down he goes as a flag comes out at the Florida State 45. Corey Smith, the defensive end, the senior from Richmond, Virginia, got there. And I know Bobby Bowden and his son Jeff, the offensive coordinator, will go after those young corners. Good protection early. This is a coverage sack, folks. Corey Smith just falls off the block, makes the play. We got a late flag from the back judge. Holding on the defense. Ten yards. And that was away from where Ricks was trying to go, which is why Chuck Amato was so upset. Automatic first down also. Moves it into NC State territory at the 48-yard line. <laughs> Look at him. A little emotion. Chuck will spend some energy on the sideline throughout a game. The Seminoles operating out of the eye right now. Jones the tailback, and here's that change as Chris Ricks gets the call from the sideline and then decides on what play they're going to run. He sees two deep coverage. Tosses to Greg Jones, who looks for a hole on the right side, and just with his strength, able to get ahead for about two. Ryan Jamison, number 20, in on the stop. But Greg Jones at 6'1", 243 pounds, only a sophomore, not your average, normal Florida State tailback. You know, he's limping a little bit. Uh, he, I saw him tape the last two weeks. He's, he's got a little bit of a gimpy ankle, but he's a little different, as you referenced, Terry, than what you usually see with that quick scat back type of guy. But he still flies at 200 and almost 50 pounds. Okay, they're playing a game out there. North Carolina State secondary all over the place, trying to confuse the young quarterback. Gets the call from the sideline. Austin Jones coming to the near side, has a hole. Good tackle in the open field at the 38-yard line, but Jones may have gotten the first down. Terrence Holt, the brother of Torrey, on the stop. And it does appear that Jones got enough for the first down. Keep in mind, folks, the starting tailback, Nicky Maddox, is hurt. Look at the fullback, 39. He's going to seal the corner right there with the block on the edge. That leaves Jones one-on-one -on -one with the defensive back. 
I think he's hurting. He usually brings a little bit more into a defensive back than that play right there. First and ten for the Seminoles now. Rick's under center. Gives it to Jones. Cuts one way. Bounces back. Struggles ahead to the 33. Roger Pollard. Backup outside linebacker for the Wolfpack on the hit. Well, Maddox has got the ankle, and, and Bobby Bowden talked about it this week. He said he could play this week. He practiced one day, and, and he thought he looked okay, but he'd love to keep him out and get him healthy for next week. It's their own version of thunder and lightning. Jones is certainly the thunder. And, of course, next week, Florida State players not wanting to, to look ahead, but got the Gators down in the swamp. Play action for Ricks. Goes up top, going deep. Got his man. Touchdown, Florida State. Tallman Gardner on the catch. It's his sixth touchdown catch in the last three weeks. Gardner, the junior out of New Orleans, had 10 touchdown catches a year ago. Really didn't see the ball that much in the first half of this season, but he's come alive in the last three weeks. 33 yards to the end zone. Yeah, he's explosive. If they get you one-on-one -on, -one on the edge, they will throw it up, folks. Xavier Padilla splits the uprights. So both teams able to move the ball down the field in their opening drives. The Wolfpack getting on the board first. Ricks, the 33-yard strike to Tommy Gardner. And we are tied at seven. What would you do if someone passed you the keys to a Pontiac Grand Am for a week? We're going to drive as fast as we can to San Francisco. We're doing big things for the Pontiac Grand Am. Big things, baby. Three-car park, next three. That's it. How do we get the three-car? It's like living a dream, baby. Yeah! Welcome to Vegas, baby. We on the strip, baby. On the strip. Oh, yes. Girls gone wild that. at the Bellagio. Yes. So what would you do with the Pontiac Grand Am? How are you doing? Tell us at Pontiac.com. <laughs> Someone passed you the keys to a Pontiac Grand Prix for a week. We're on our way to Lime Rock, premier Grand Prix racetrack around here. Where else would you take a Grand Prix except on a Grand Prix track? Let me see how you handle, baby. Did I tell you? It's so much fun. Get out of my way. Talk about an adventure. None of us have ever been to AC. Talks is dinner. What do you mean it's nice? I don't think a waiter. <laughs> Can you hit him? So what would you do with the Pontiac Grand Prix? Elvis! Tell us at Pontiac.com. <laughs> ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Pontiac. What would you do with some Pontiac excitement? Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler, BU. Nothing's better. Dr. Pepper, Mutual of Omaha, providing insurance and financial services, and Dell, enterprise systems that are easy to build, easy to own, easy as Dell. Campus here in Tallahassee on homecoming weekend. Tom and Gardner with his... Touchdown catch just a moment ago. The strike from Chris Ricks to tie up the ball game at seven. And so far, it's an offensive shootout. Yeah, Tom and Gardner's been on fire, and you can't throw that football any better than Chris Ricks did on that one-on-one -on -one coverage. Well, we've watched him all season, and, and we've watched tapes getting ready for this. How much he has, just in terms of decisions, gotten better and better. As Golden goes to one knee, and the Wolfpack will start at their own 20. And what I like there is that what Ricks did on that last play is he identified single coverage on the corner. And worst case scenario, he put it in the place where no one else could get it but his receiver. Pontiac game solutions? Well, first one for State. Ricks can't be Barry Bonds. No home runs. You know what, folks? He just hit one. No turnovers move the chains offensively, and they've got to not just get a tie on special teams. NC State's got to win the special teams battle. First and ten at their own 20, Phillip Rivers in at quarterback. We've seen Owen Hannum there already. 
this young game. Ray Robinson, the inside give, fights his way out to the 25-yard line. Gain of about five for Kevin Emanuel. Got there on the stop. And for Florida State, for the Pontiac Game Solutions, Ricks has got to make the right decisions and no turnovers. That's been his problem this year, turnovers. They've got to contain Robinson both in the air and on the ground attack. And lastly, their red zone defense has got to be better than it has all year because North Carolina State's red zone offense has been the number one in the ACC. Now, Robinson's had two consecutive games over 100 yards rushing, but it's not just that that you have to stop. You got to stop this, too, out of the backfield. Robinson spinning ahead and close to a Wolfpack first down at the 30. Ryan McFadden, the freshman out of Hollywood, Florida, on the hit. That's, that's just a slip screen with Chris Colmer, the right tackle out in front. If Colmer got his head on a swivel, he could have made a block and made this a big play. Watch number 70, Chris Colmer, left side of your screen, splits out. If he's looking the other way, look, he gets the block right there on the tackler, and it's a big play. Instead, Bryant McFadden knocks him down for little to no gain. First and 10 for NC State at the 30-yard line. Willie Wright, the tight end in motion to the far sideline. Straight drop. Going to Peterson. Did he hold on? Yes. At the 46-yard line, what a catch by Brian Peterson. A gain of 24, and very quickly we send it to New York and John Saunders. Well, Terry, on the Burger King update, Joe Paterno is looking to win for the fourth consecutive game after starting 0-4. A lot of help early. Bruce Branch takes the punt and goes 71 yards for the touchdown. Penn State leads the Illini 7-0. Terry. John, thank you. Back here in the ACC, first and 10 at the 46 for NC State moving it again here on their second drive of the game. Rivers under pressure, flushed out of the pocket, tosses it back to Robinson, who gets to the 43. There is a flag on the play. Yeah, I think they're going to get NC State for a legal procedure. I thought the emotion guy turned it up a little quick. And you are correct. Well, the Wolfpack offense this year, Chuck Amato's club last in the ACC in terms of rushing the football. But they do it in different ways. They get it done, as you've talked about, not just by handing it off left or right to Robinson. Yeah, and they're last in first downs also. But what that guy right there does, their quarterback, Phillip Rivers, he uses the short go, pass motion. game. On the offense, five yards, previous spot, repeat first down. But Phillip Rivers uses the short pass game just like a run game. So when they swing it out to Robinson, it's no different than toss sweep. Pulling people out in front and knocking down defensive ends. That's their game. Can you put a number on it today for Florida State? you got to keep Robinson under whatever total yardage? He's averaged 100 a game for eight games total yardage, so you want to keep him down below that. Shotgun now. As Rivers changes the play, the quick out, that's Peterson. Tough yardage back near the original line of scrimmage. Stanford Samuels, one of those young cornerbacks in on the hit for Florida State, a sophomore out of Miami. These are two fun offenses to watch. It's the wide receiver screen. The two wide outs get out in front of Peterson. They've got Hannum and Kotchery out in front. And all they're trying to do is get a little seam. If you can just get a piece of the guy, you don't have to be a monster. You don't have to knock him down. You just need to get in his way a little bit and get, give your receiver a chance to make a play. Third and nine now. Set up the screen. That's not going anywhere. Kendall Holt read it all the way. Ray Robinson never had a chance. And I really like these linebackers at Florida State. I think that's the strength of this defense. Kendall Pope is their will linebacker, their outside linebacker. Great pressure up the middle by Jennings. Look how he reads it. Sees the, the uh, offensive guard pull out, reads it all the way, makes the big hit. That was second down. Brings up third. Now and almost 15. Now this is where they spread the field. will probably do something in the middle now if they can get you spread out enough. There it is. And it's a Robinson inside who slips at the 45-yard line, and that will bring up fourth down. Yeah, they, third and 17 or 18, they don't want to make a big mistake. They spread the field and try and get Robinson enough to hopefully get a, uh, far enough for a field goal, but that's not going to happen here. 
the Florida State defensively today, can you take chances more than you have? Because you now there isn't a Corn Robinson out there for NC right. State. There's not a big play receiver. Now, that's a great point. I think Mickey Andrews is going to be a little more aggressive today with his play on the corner. Blitz a little bit more, let them out in an island. Dominic Robinson back at his own 10 yard line, going to call for the fair catch. Back up to the eighth. One of 38 yards from Austin Herbert. And Florida State backed up inside their own 10 for their second drive of the afternoon. Tied at seven. There's a light in your soul that says you're one of a kind. Don't never let it go. Be original, an individual. Like Dr. Pepper. Be you. Then I had that taste. The new grilled sourdough bacon cheeseburger at Burger King. Now I'm a believer. With grilled sourdough bread. Not a trace. A doubt in my mind. A quarter pound of flame broiled beef. I'm in love. Ooh. Two slices of melted Swiss cheese. Four strips of bacon. I the new grilled sourdough bacon cheeseburger will make you a believer. Now for a limited time at Burger King. Shrek, the biggest movie of the year. Now available wherever videos are sold. premier event saving private ryan presented uncut sunday at 8 7 central on abc viewer discretion is strongly advised not bad when you can watch a football game in november and the temperatures in the high 70s sunshine here in tallahassee been a gorgeous couple of days on the campus here seminoles and chris ricks he's perfect on the afternoon including the 33 yard strike to gardner on the first drive, they take over, though, at their own eight-yard line. Greg Jones has a hole, howls his way across the 20 to the 21-yard line, and punishes uh, the secondary of NC State at the end. Terrence Holt, Marcus Hudson took that punishment. Now, when Florida State's in I formation, their fullback, Chad Mater, will pretty much take you to the fullback football. Watch 39, isolation block, great block on the inside linebacker. That opens up the hole. Jones does the rest. 243 pounds. That's what he's listed at. He may go a little heavier than that. First down. Here comes Jones again to the near side line. Can't get outside up to the 29. Gain of about three on the play. Marcus Hudson, the freshman. Cornerback from Miami on the hit. And there is a flag on the play. You know, when Florida State gets in that eye, they call it regular people eye formation. Pretty much what they're going to do is run ISO, toss sweep, and play action pass. It's a simple package, and they just say line up and stop us. But the key to it, which is kind of funny, is their fullback, Chad Mater, former walk-on. He's just a thug. He wears number 39. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, spot of the foul, repeat first down. Mater earned a scholarship because he'll knock down linebackers and defensive ends. It's a thankless job. He's got two carries on the season, no pass receptions. Terry, he could wear any number. He doesn't, 39 doesn't matter. He could be 79, 69, 59, because his only job is to knock people down. I know you mean that in the most positive way. Trust me, Mater. I appreciate him. <laughs> From one to another? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I was a defensive back, but he, he's a thug, and I appreciate his thug. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Seminoles backed up now at their own 12-yard line. First and 20 for Ricks out of the gun. Give it to Jones, bouncing outside. Can't get around LeVar Fisher. He ran him down, the senior out of Beaufort, North Carolina. And this is why this kid's an All-American. He's got 460 career tackles coming into today, and he flies sideline to sideline, folks. Leading tackler in the ACC, coming in with 116 tackles today. 
Brings up second and 16 after the gain of four. Wolfpack showing blitz. We'll see if they actually come. Now backing off a bit. What chess game right now. Jones straight ahead. Greg Jones to the 30-yard line and maybe the 31. Has to get outside the 31 for the first down. Chad Mater sprung him with the block, and you just talked about it. You're exactly right. Another cut job by Mater. Opened it wide open for Jones. Well, the U.S. national soccer team already qualified for the 2002 World Cup. Now they look to continue their winning ways against Trinidad and Tobago tomorrow at 2 Eastern, 1 Pacific, right here on ABC. A double tight one wide receiver. This is play action or run. This is their formation for that. There goes Mater getting the carry this time on third and two. Did he get there? That's where they throw him the bone. He just had two great blocks, screen Jones. Getting the double tight and push the pile. Every once in a while they throw him one and say, uh, here you go. This is, uh, this is your prize. Game number nine, here's your third carry. Got enough to move the chains. That's all that matters. After defense coordinator, you want to be cognizant of personnel groupings. Regular people, once again, toss, iso, and play action, folks. First and ten at the 33. There's a look again at Ricks and how Florida State runs their offense this year, how they call their plays. Jones, who has gotten a lot of the work early on, wrapped up in the backfield, though. Nothing doing. Jarek Hall, number 33, the junior out of Leland, North Carolina. Wrapped him up as soon as he got the ball. You know, when we talked with Jeff Bowden yesterday, Jeff couldn't say enough about Greg Jones' his sophomore tailback. He's got that rare combination of size and speed that just has Bowden salivating, because if he can use Jones in a way to take the heat off Ricks, they both have three years left in this offense. To look at Jeff. Second and ten from the 33. Rick's plenty of time now flushed out. And he can run up to the 37-yard line. That's going to be well short of a first down. He's got to get to the 43. Corey Smith able to pressure him out of the pocket. And that's an interest. What, what North Carolina State did defensively is they went too deep with their safeties and let everybody tail man-to-man -man underneath. Little game underneath with number 48, Corey Smith, who flushed him from the pocket. It forced him up into the pocket. Another good defensive play by NC State. Brings up third and six now for the Seminoles. Four wides, folks. Shotgun. Here they come. Here come the pack. Show blitz. Now they pull back and they come. Over the middle. Walker's got it. Come on, Walker. Will he get to the end zone? Foot race. He's there. Touchdown, Florida State. 63 yards. And how about Chris Rich picking up the blitz? I don't think you can do that if you're NC State. You're a 7-7 ball game. Make them go 95 yards. Don't give them one-on-one -on -one coverage with no free safety in the hole. They're just too talented. They're going to beat up on your corner. Look at this. No problem. He throws off his back foot. It's not even close. Greg Golden, the true freshman, is not even close to Javon Walker, and nor will he be for the rest of the game if they leave him out there like that. Xavier Bathia on for the extra point. Up and good. So the quick strike from Ricks to Walker. He threw one earlier to Tom and Gardner, and now the senior out of Louisiana comes down with a big catch. 63 yards as Ricks picked up the blitz perfectly. And they brought both safeties. He knows nobody's in the hole. That's a great job of recognition, good decision. I don't question the Florida State side. I, if you're North Carolina State, that's too much pressure to put on a true freshman corner. Javon Walker, Coleman Gardner, and Adrian Bell will eat them alive all day. That's an image that Florida State fans are going to get used to. Rick's throwing off that back foot, back pedaling, and, and he didn't even need to. The protection was there. They brought both safeties up the middle. Great job of blitz pickup by the line and by the um, running back. It's just a great job by Florida State. And they're just too big and athletic for you on the edge. Yeah, baby. Seven the plays hole, going 92 yards. Javon Walker had six catches last week and two touchdowns. He's got a touchdown already here in the first against NC State. But, but that's my point. They started out the, on the eight-yard line. I'm going to say I'm going to force you to pound that ball 92 yards. I'm not going to give you an easy one. 
and that's what we talked about with our game solutions. Don't let him be Barry Bonds. He's already got two long touchdown passes today. Looks like at least Sammy Sosa so far. <laughs> Get the Bonds by the end of the game. Lamont Reed, Greg Golden back deep. A couple of true freshmen for the Wolfpack set to return this kick. It'll be Reed at his own five yard line. Cuts back, looks for a seam. Out to the 24. Josh Charles, the second time in on a stop on a kickoff. Well, NC State has been able to move the ball, though, so far. They moved all the way down from their own 24 on their opening drive to put seven on the board. Yeah, and this is a key drive now. They just got hit, 92-yard drive, the big home run. Can the offense come back and give their defense a little bit of a blow here? They need to move the chains and hopefully put some points on the, on the board at the other end. Andy Edwards, number 14 in the ball game right now, split to the far side. Raymond Peterson to the near side. Take the give to Robinson, rolling out and throwing his rivers. He's got Edwards. Devontae Edwards all the way inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Wow. Track me. 56 yards. How you liking this one so far, folks? <laughs> this is a track meet. Edwards on the edge. He runs right by the corner. Rufus Brown. The safety doesn't come over the top. So it was either the coverage was blown either by Chris Pope, who's an academic All-American, I doubt blows that coverage, or Rufus Brown, the sophomore, who just let him run by without contacting him. They'll call it down at the 20. And the Wolfpack with a quick strike again. Jackson Robinson in the backfield. Robinson looking for room, not much doing. Ahead for maybe two to the 18. Now we talked about the game solutions, red zone efficiencies. North Carolina State's been in the red zone 26 times this year, has scored 18 touchdowns. Chuck Amato told us on our conference call, you don't beat Florida State by attempting field goals. You get down there, you got to score a touchdown. Critical drive here. Final seconds of the first quarter here in Tallahassee. And what has been a shootout so far? Yeah, this is fun. Rivers directing traffic now as the clock will run out. But they won't get this off. Not much wind to speak of here in the sun setting, so they change ends. Doesn't really matter. Back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. What would you do if someone passed you the keys to a Pontiac Grand Am for a week? Now I'm getting psyched. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. How do you feel? So excited. Got it, Grammy. The state number three, right? I'm telling everybody for the rest of my life about this. So what would you do with the Pontiac Grand Am? Tell us at Pontiac.com. Okay, good news. That broadband thing we all want? Got it figured out. Honey, you call the phone company. Tracy, you're digging the trench. Shovel's in the garage. I'm going up on the roof to assess satellite possibilities. Timmy, check out the schematics. Appreciate it. Let's go! We know how you feel, and that's why Circuit City offers one-stop high-speed internet access. You can find what's available where, compare options, and arrange installation. Circuit City, we're with you. Yeah, we can get broadband at Circuit City. Uh, oh. What would you do if someone passed you the keys to a Pontiac Grand Prix for a week? I'm out, man. Let's go. I'm out to see the world. San Francisco, here we go. Oh. Are we having fun yet? Yeah. Doesn't take much to have fun, does it? <laughs> it's like riding on a surfboard. You're gonna have to call me Dixie if I wear this. All right, Dixie. I can smell the salt water from here. Give us a swell, baby. So what would you do with the Pontiac Grand Prix? <laughs> Tell us at Pontiac.com. There's some good surf out there. Reviewing our last fiscal year, the numbers from January were slightly better than the numbers from February. However, the numbers in January were identical to the numbers in March. The numbers in April were slightly lower than the numbers in March, but identical. Like playing games? Come to Best Buy, where you can play the latest video games and try out a lot of other cool stuff. Best Buy. Go ahead. Turn on the fun. This is ABC News Channel 27. Marty Galbraith, the offensive coordinator in his first year 
at NC State so far so good for the offensive scheme. Yeah, so far, one red zone, one touchdown. Now they're back in the red zone for the second time. I love the way they spread the field and make you defend vertically and horizontally. Rivers, six of seven, 93 yards so far. Second down coming up here. Second and eight from the 18. I'd watch out for Willie Wright down here, the tight end. Out of the gun is Rivers. Swings it out. There's Robinson. Cuts back down to the 12. Got to get to the 10 for a first down. Third catch of the afternoon for Ray Robinson. And remember, he came in today having 33 catches already. That's just like a run for them. That's toss sweep as far as NC State is concerned. If you get him out there on air, he's got a chance of making somebody miss. Okay, there it is. Just a little swing. Catch it now. Get out in the open field. Swivel the hips. Missed tackle right there by Rufus Brown. And you pick up seven or eight yards. That's a good play. Jackson Robinson out of the eye. Now they swing them out on third and two. Look at a bunch. Four in the bunch. Quick out. Cotre's got the ball. Inside the 10. He gets to the end zone. Jericho Cotre, the sophomore out of Birmingham, Alabama. And he got great blocking from Willie Wright, the tight end who was split out there, and the other two wide outs. Guys, I just love, I love the way they set up their offense here. Four guys in a bunch. That, Terry, that was actually a lateral. That was technically a lateral, yeah. so it doesn't go as a touchdown pass for exactly. Philip Rivers, but he didn't care. <laughs> six equals six to me. I don't Absolutely. care. Absolutely. The offense has ruled so far in Tallahassee today on both sides. Adam Hiker on for the extra point up, and it is good. And guess what, folks? We got a ball game. Florida State may have been a big favorite coming in, but they haven't proven they can stop NC State's offense so far. Southwestern egg rolls, where East meets Southwest. Hi, can I help you? Yeah, I think I'm starting to go bald. Yeah, well, that happens to the best of us. <laughs> now at Sears Auto Center, our best-selling Michelin tires are on sale. Sears, where else? Ho, ho, ho! Oh, I hope you didn't put all those on the credit card. Yeah, why? Do you know what those interest charges are going to do to us? Don't worry, I used our new Capital One No Hassle card. Fed up with exploding credit card rates to the neighbors! With Capital One's new No Hassle Platinum card, you get one low fixed rate and none of the hassle. Gotta tell Steve and Laura about Capital One. What's in your wallet? How can you provide for the future of the people who depend on you? With Pacific Life and its expertise and investments, annuities, and insurance. Discover the power of Pacific Life. Chili Southwestern Egg Rolls, where East meets Southwest. Syracuse faces number one Miami for other regional action next Saturday on ABC. Back in Tallahassee, the great aerial views, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Overhead, the Goodyear Blint Stars and Stripes, continuing a 76-year tradition as the aerial ambassador, an icon of the 100-year-old company. On a glorious day in Tallahassee here. And Catch your breath yet? 14 all, opening moments of the second quarter. Nobody can stop anyone yet. I'm enjoying this. I mean, average yards per play, what are you kidding me? North Carolina State at 12.7, Florida State at 12.9. It, it just doesn't get any more fun than that. Well, not if you're Mickey Andrews. 
or uh, Buddy Green. The defensive coordinators aren't liking this so far, but well, that's too bad. We are, and our fans are. Afonso Thorpe will take it at his own one-yard line. Cuts back, look for room, maybe a bad decision, and hauled in at the 13-yard line. Nice coverage by NC State. Olin Hannum has been everywhere. <laughs> He's, he's the backup quarterback. Remember earlier in the game, what they did is they moved the quarterback Rivers out the split end, direct snap into Hannum. He plays special teams, he plays quarterback, he plays wide receiver, and they said he's too good an athlete to keep on the bench. They got to find ways to get him in. He's getting us a hot dog at halftime, by the way. <laughs> now here's that touchdown play. Four people split out. It's actually a lateral. Good blocking by Jackson and Wright. And how about Kotri? It's not a touchdown pass, but you know what? It's just as good. Eric Shelton in at tailback now for Florida State. The freshman out of Lexington, Kentucky. Ricks on the roll. Throws, had a man open, but he overthrew Carver Donaldson, his tight end. Yeah, that's a little bootleg. He had his guard, Montre Holland, out in front. He could either run that or hit Donaldson and drag it across from the far side. That's just uh, an inaccurate pass from the redshirt freshman. Donaldson, a couple of catches this year, has yet to catch a touchdown. Pass from Ricks. Shelton, Bobby Bowden talked about getting him some playing time today. Again, Nick Maddox out with an injured ankle. We still may see him. Though. He practiced yesterday, and I thought he looked pretty good. Long count for Ricks. The toss to Shelton coming this way. And a hole initially. Terrence Holt closed it quickly, but he did get ahead to about the 17-yard line. Holt with Junior out of Gibsonville, North Carolina. And of course, known as the younger brother of Tory, who actually bought him a car uh, this past year, I believe. But Holt is a guy who has a 38-inch vertical leap. And if you've watched the pack at all the last couple of years, you know that he just can get up incredibly on field goal tries. He's got six block field goals, two block punts throughout his career. Nobody attempting any field goals so far. They're all scoring touchdowns. Open is gone right through his hands. Tallman Gardner, well, he won't want to watch the tape on that one. Uh, you know, we talked early on about no home runs for Chris Ricks. He's already hit two, and that's one that Tallman Gardner should have caught. He's isoed on Brian Williams, blows right by him. Holt can't get over the top. Look at the pass, folks. Tough catch over your shoulder like that, but if you're going to be an All-American receiver next year, Tallman, you've got to catch that one. Look at this. Here we go. Chance Waltney. Back to punt. Low snap, but he gets it off. It's a good one, too. Ryan Peterson. Fair catch, and he dropped it, but I believe he got it back. He did. After the punt of 40 yards, Peterson went to one knee, and he covered it at the 44. Time now for our Aflac trivia question. Here it is. When was the last time NC State beat the Seminoles here in Tallahassee. They beat them in Raleigh in 98 when Winky threw the six interceptions, but last time here in Tallahassee. Am I allowed or no? Not right now. Okay. You get time to think about it. We'll come back to that all right. in a little bit. Here they go again. They three wide receivers switch all the way over, changing the strength, forcing Florida State to react. Inside give. Robinson cutting back, trying to get to the outside. He's not going to get there, but a good game of about nine. Run out of bounds by Kendall Pope. And once again, everything they do has a reason. Great job that time by Rivers influencing the defensive end. Watch him roll on the snap. He's going to roll to his left. The defensive end up the field. Now they come back the other way. And you can see number 90 right there. Kevin Emanuel thought it was a pass. Was trying to get up the field. They cut right back inside. Ray Robinson with 44 yards already on the afternoon. Five carries. Change the strength again. Trips to the wide side. Out of the gun, Rivers with time, throws low, and did Willie Wright catch it? He hauled it in. What a catch by his tight end. Here's a tight end in a receiver's body. He's gained 40 pounds throughout his college career, but he's got wide receiver hands, no doubt about that. And he's split out. He's just split way out. He's working on a defensive back that's 5'10", 180. He's 6'4", 240. They throw it to the inside. Look at the hands, folks. Great hands by Willie Wright. That's his 28th catch of the year, and he's probably one of the top two or three receiving tight ends in the country. 
Talk to the Florida State coaches, and they think he may be the best tight end that they played against. Ray Robinson couldn't get away. Good tackle by Bulware. Michael Bulware, the sophomore out of Columbia, South Carolina. I didn't mean to jump in there. I just got excited. His quickness, acceleration, I thought they had a hole there. Bulware just slammed it shut. You're a defensive guy. You got to get excited about something this afternoon here on defense. <laughs> well, that's about the first defensive play of the day. Exactly. And Bulware is a sophomore. They think he's got huge big play capabilities. Second and eight. Three receivers set again for the pack. Out to Robinson. Oh, good move to cut back inside the 25 down to the 23 yard line. Abdul Howard finally stopped him, but a gain of 16. Don't forget, next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, number 18, Syracuse, taking on Ken Dorsey and top ranked Miami. Dodged a big one this afternoon at BC. There's your Big East showdown. Also, regional action coming your way, including number 13, Michigan and Wisconsin. Our cable operator, satellite provider for the games available on pay per view next week here on ABC. First and 10, ah. Rivers, the quarterback draw inside the 20. Jeff Womble eventually stopped him, but we've seen just about everything in the bag of tricks from uh, Chuck Amato so far. Now, Chris Ricks runs a 4-5. This guy runs about a 6-5, and they're running. Look at this offense. Here goes Coach Ray Jackson, 25, into the hole, makes the block on Pope, and they're running quarterback draw with a guy that, that I can probably beat. I'll tell you right now, I mean, it, they do everything. They make you defend, Terry. What I love is you got to defend all 11 guys. Second and seven coming up, but NC State wants to talk it over. Marty Galbraith, Chuck Amato on the sidelines. Key second down play coming up when we return to Tallahassee. Hey, looks like it's going to be a great race. Yeah, I guess. You knew around here, huh? Yeah. Well, good luck. It goes like this. I face my ride. I'll take it to the top. Cause I want it. You need it. This will not be tonight. But I'll take a little time. And I'm never gonna stop. Gonna stop. Gonna stop. Gonna stop. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Good race. Thanks. Make it a Bud Light. Want to try that triple lutz? What the heck? I got supplemental insurance. What's that? Affleck! A lutz? No, that something something insurance. Affleck! Oh. Even the best insurance doesn't give you cash for things like lost pay and other expenses. Uh, this does. What does? Affleck! Affleck. Ask about it at work. and counting. The new 210 horsepower supercharged Nissan Xterra. Still everything you need, nothing you don't. Good look at the state capitol, a little less active this time around in November than it was a year ago. <laughs> ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Nissan. Nissan, driven. Bud Light, with a great taste that won't fill you up, never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. Capital One, who asks, what's in your wallet? And it's Sprint PCS, the clear alternative to cellular. No more hanging chads over there at the Capitol. <laughs> now they're just hanging passes all over the place. Second and seven for the Wolfpack here. 10-17 left until halftime. 14 all. After the timeout, Rivers under center. Play action under pressure over the middle and that's complete at the 15 yard line. The catch by Jericho Cotri who ran it in just a few moments ago for the second touchdown of the afternoon for the pack. And a look at our Nissan drive summary so far Mike. Well as you can see touchdown punt touchdown look at the length of the drive though five six and four of these guys more big play capability today than they've shown the rest of the season. 
Third and two, they split the backs. Jackson, Robinson over the middle with a flag down. There's Peterson with a catch, fighting his way to the three-yard line, but we'll have to wait and see what the flag is all about. This offense puts more pressure on the outside of the, the linebackers and the defensive backs than most you'll see around the country. And I think that's going to be on the defense, folks. Yep. So the pack obviously declining the penalty, and they'll have first and goal from the three. Remember, we Chuck Amato told us you don't beat Florida State by attempting field goals. You got to score touchdowns in the red zone. They've been there twice. They've got two touchdowns. This is their third time in, and their first and goal from the three. Conversely, what did Mickey Andrews tell us? Said our in our yep. goal line defense has been horrible this year. The pack perfect on the year, and first and goal to go. Three tight end set. Jackson Robinson, here goes Ray Robinson looking to cut back. He gets there. Touchdown, Wolfpack. So a defense that gave up 58 points in the last two weeks, even though they were in wins, continues to struggle and give up big numbers here. It's gotten awfully quiet in Doe Campbell Stadium, except for that section right there with the red. But William Brown, the left guard, did a nice job pulling out and creating just enough of a crevice for the touchdown. Adam Kiker on for the extra point. Just inside the right, upright, and the pack on a roll offensively here in Tallahassee on the road. Remember, Chuck Amato coming back after 18 years as an assistant coach here in Tallahassee. He's got his offense going on. Ray Robinson, the run to pay dirt. He didn't have to say a word. It was written all over his face. Sir, got a minute? Business people everywhere needed to know about the Sprint PCS Clear Wireless Workplace. The most advanced wireless package customized for their companies. Now the office goes wherever they go. Sure, some still do things the old way, but they'll come around. Introducing the tough new crew cab long bed. It's the next frontier. Is the market up? Is it down? That's the wrong question. The right question is, do you have a smart, long-term financial plan? If you were going to go out and play a football game, you just wouldn't run out into the field without a game plan, even though it may be fourth and long, and it feels very uncomfortable. You have a plan and you have to stick to it. We've been helping people plan long term for over 120 years. We understand and we know how to get through difficult times. The Principal Financial Group. We understand what you're working for. When the Navy sought a power source for a new generation of ship, we had the right energy. When the nation called for better hurricane forecasting, conditions here were perfect. And when a life-saving cancer drug was in short supply, we had the right chemistry. How fast do ideas move? At the speed of imagination. Florida State University. Ideas that move. I'm gonna do everything I can to blow you out of the lineup. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Brian's Song, Sunday, December 2nd on ABC. Back deep, Crefonso Thorpe. Going five yards and to one knee, so the Seminoles will bring it out to the 20-yard line as they trail 21-14 with 8.56 left until halftime. And this touchdown run for Ray, Ray Robin. Watch the left guard, 78, William Brown. He's going to pull out. Now he's looking for Kendall Pope, number nine. There he is. Pope tries to get inside. He gets just enough of a body to push him back and allow Robinson to get that low lean underneath the pads and score a touchdown. Mickey Andrews can't be pleased at this point. Defensive coordinator, 18 years on the sideline in Tallahassee. And their defense having a tough time figuring out the different sets and all the different 
Motions of the NC State offense, and what Rivers has done. Ricks the throw. He throws back. Gardner with the catch at the 35. Did a nice job coming back. And Florida State, they'll move the chains. Nick Maddox actually on the catch. Look at him limping, too. It's the first time we've seen Maddox this afternoon. He's got the ankle injury and doesn't look good at this point. Now, I told you I saw him at practice yesterday. He looked pretty good, but what happened was Ricks forced him to, to push off on the ankle and come back to the football, and I think he turned it again. First down. Give to Greg Jones some tough running straight ahead out to the 38. I think Julius Patterson got a little helmet on helmet contact there and this NC State defense is just fired up now. Patterson the junior out of Morganton North Carolina. Former wide receiver last year played wide out played cornerback safety tailback. Regular people in the game, eye formation. He looks to the sidelines, gets the new play. Now he's going to talk it, let everybody know what it is. Play clock. Plenty of time. Jones looking for room. Found some. Got a first down for Florida State out to the 48. And they'll move the change after the gain of nine by Greg Jones. Don't forget coming up. Capital One Halftime Show. John Saunders, Terry Bowden bringing you all the scores and highlights from college football. All the action around the country today. Capital One Halftime Show. Seven minutes, 40 seconds and counting from now. High formation. Here we go again. We just saw the toss. It's toss, iso, play action in the pocket or play action, waggle, bootleg. That's about their whole package out of eye. Down to one on the play clock. Play action under pressure. Hudson missed them. And there goes Ricks trying to get outside now. Not able to. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Brian Jamison, a senior out of Sweetsboro, New Jersey, on the hit. Yeah, Jamison and Fisher, the two outside linebackers, did a nice job there. Because it looked like for a second that Ricks, who runs a 4-5-4, there's the play action. He's looking for the home run. Hudson on the corner blitz, misses him. He gets away from 48, Corey Smith. Look at the flow, though. That's a great job by Jamison in the open field tackling Chris Rick. Ricks has taken some hits over the last couple of weeks, too, even though he's been really successful and thrown all for all the yards. He has uh, been banged up. It looks like Florida State took a timeout here. Rick's going to come over and have a word. Well, gave the Aflac trivia question a few minutes ago. When was the last time NC State came into Tallahassee and beat the Seminoles? Got to go way back. <laughs> way back in 1967. 2010 victory. And uh, Chuck Amato was a senior linebacker. The White Shoes defense back then. And uh, yeah, you knew he had a little flair for the dramatic when they used to polish those black shoes and make them white. Yeah, they were actually black. Yeah. Hey, there's Chuck. <laughs> oh, what a great. Uh, do you remember I, those poses? I love the way they used to pose. Young for it. I mean, they used to do that. Everybody did. Even if you were a guard, you did that. I mean, you gotta be kidding me. They never show the bottom foot, though, because it's only about three inches off the ground. <laughs> you know, there's a box underneath him. Nobody sees it. Look at him. And his voice the other day in the conference call, you knew he was fired up for this game. By the time he got on the call with us on Wednesday, he had already lost his voice just about for the week. He's a little fired up coming back to Tallahassee. And he should be right now with what the offense has been able to do. You know what's happening though is North Carolina State defense is starting to get a little feel now. Made a stop last time. Offense took over three for three in the red zone. They're up seven now. Second and ten. Florida State's got three wide receivers, two tight ends, no back. This is their shotgun formation. They'd like to throw the ball down the field. Both teams at 200 yards or more already in this game. <laughs> Just under seven minutes left until half. Swing pass out here to Jones. Greg Jones with a cutback. Pack defense got there quickly, though, to close the gap at the 47. Aaron's holding on the stop. Really love that play. I watched it in practice, and what they do is they, they draw the attention. There's the fake to Mater. Everybody's going to the left. That gives the center guard and tackle time to get out in front of the tailback who looped behind the quarterback. Now you got Greg Jones on air with three big monsters out in front of him. And that was a lateral. That wasn't a forward pass. Correct. Third and six coming up. Eric Shelton now the tailback for Florida State. Straight drop. Throwing over the middle. 
and there was contact. Javon Walker had a defender, Marcus Hudson, draped all over him. Yeah, that, that, there's no question that was interference. That's what they call their robber defense. The safeties, one safety goes deep middle, the other safety goes shallow middle, and they're hoping you get that. Everybody funnels Holding it. on the defense before the pass, 10 yards, previous spot, first down. The corners funnel everybody inside, hoping that the quarterback will get a little greedy and throw it, and that's exactly what they got, but they weren't able to take advantage of it. Defense. Defensive coordinator Buddy Green. There's a guy I think needs to step up today. True freshman Marcus Hudson at a 100-yard interception return. Last week against Duke, youngest of five brothers who have all played college football in the family, including Jarrell, who is a linebacker for Florida State right now. Fake the toss, Ricks to throw, Walker in the end zone, Hudson all over him, no flag. Let me explain something. In college football, there's no such thing as face guarding. There is in high school and there is in the pros. You don't have to turn around and look at the football as long as you don't interfere with him physically. You don't have to turn around and look. Now let's see what happens. Once again, Ricks does a good job on the fake. He knows he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage deep. Let's see what happens. The back is turned. Is he pushing? No, I think that's a good call. A good no call, I should say. Almost the entire crowd here at Doe Campbell doesn't agree with you, but uh, the NC State fans certainly did. Ricks, he can run over the middle, the slide, and maybe a bit of experience shown by Ricks there. He's got the first down, but there is a flag back at the 36. And that's back where they usually call holding. And that's coming back, folks. Holding on the offense. Jeff Bowden, offensive coordinator. Now, you know what? He was concerned about Chris Ricks' decisions today. So far, I think Chris Ricks has done a great job decision-making. And Jeff Bowden was very close to uh, making a switch about three weeks ago. Adrian McPherson, talented backup, true freshman who has played significant time this year, but they've stayed with Ricks, and it's paid off. Second down, play action for Ricks. Again, flushed out with room to run a moment ago, but the Wolfpack close and he's down to the 41. It's a good hit, too. Well, he's taking his hits, but the, the slide right. on the last play, maybe earlier in the season he wasn't doing that. You know what? I want, you know, I saw our colleague Bob Greasy say, I hate to see a quarterback take a hit like that. You need to get down. What I've seen with Ricks is when he's in the open field, he's very good at getting what he can get and getting down, but sometimes he gets in a situation where he gets a little greedy. Fifth in the ACC in third down conversions on the season. Third down and almost 13 coming up here. Four receivers set. Ricks thrown off his back foot. Thrown it up for grabs and incomplete. Well covered by the NC State secondary. Yeah, Julius Patterson, the people are going again, but Julius Patterson, strong safety, I thought did an excellent job closing in I thought Chris should have gone up top to where he had single coverage instead of double coverage. So for the second time in the game, the NC State defense has held, and they're forcing a punt. Now, both teams like the fake punts, and, and I got to believe North Carolina State's going to be in punt safe right here. Brian Peterson back. Of course, the fake punt against Maryland that did not work certainly has made Bobby Bowden perhaps a little bit shy of doing that. Peterson backs off, and it's going to roll inside the 10. And they'll down it at the 9-yard line. On of 32 yards. Well, earlier this season, the Super Bowl champs, the Ravens, overwhelmed the Titans. Now, time for the rematch. Steve McNair, Eddie George, Tennessee, looking for payback. What should be a great AFC Central battle. The Ravens and Titans coming your way on Monday Night Football at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, right here on ABC. 21-14, Philip Rivers, the sophomore of Athens, Alabama, taking over for the pack from his own nine. Robinson hit, spins away, and ahead for a gain of three. Ray Robinson doing all of that on his own. Yeah, we talked at the top about how important Ray Robinson is to this offense. 
not only on the run side from the tailback position, but also from the receiving side. His production today has been tremendous. He's got 12 touches for a total of 72 yards. Crowd now finally getting into it, trying to spur the defense on. Huh? Rivers over the middle, complete, about a yard and a half, maybe two yards shy of a first down. The struggle for the football, Florida State says they have it, but the officials say no. He was down. In a pretty good spot if you're an NC State fan. They're spotting that thing yeah. all the way up near the 20. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna have to measure, I think. Rivers, one of those guys for Chuck Amato who just does not make mistakes much of the time. And that's the one thing that all the coaches talk about. And, wow, it's that close. <laughs> he can't even get his fingers in between the ball and the end of the chain. And that might be a, a, a link and a half. That's about it. <laughs> not even two links. I think it's a wink and a smile. Look at that. Now, now do you think that offensive coordinator Marty Galbraith takes the old, okay, it's third in, in an inch, and I'm going to put all my big guys in and, and fake it and go up top. Play action, the old Bart Starr thing. I don't think they're going to because I think they want to move the chains here and extend the drive and not have to punt from where they are, but they got everybody in tight. There it is. Straight ahead, should have it. The surge by the offensive line and Rivers keeping it, and they'll move the chains. Now, well, take a look now at our Pacific Life game summary. I and mean, we've had plenty of action so far. Remember the fumble early on. Jackson into the end zone. Derek Green came up with the first score. Talman Gardner, 33 yards. Javon Walker, 63 yards. Back from the pack. Jericho Cotri just dancing into the end zone. And Ray Robinson, a lot of action in the end zone so far. 21 to 14. NC State with the lead. The inside give to Ray Robinson. Good yardage on first down again across the 25 to the 26. And if you're Marty Galbraith, the offensive coordinator at NC State, you're saying I'm up 21-14, the clock's at 248 and ticking. I want to keep moving the chains, moving the clock, try and get another field goal or a touchdown, best case, but I don't want to give the football back to Florida State before halftime. Gain of five on first down for Robinson. The Florida State defense of old, this is where they shine. They would create turnovers and score touchdowns. Rivers throws behind Jackson. He was well covered by Bradley Jennings. I, I thought Kotchery was wide open on the read here across the middle. Uh, Rivers usually is impeccable in his reads, but I thought he forced one there when he had Cotchery wide open, seven yards hooked up over the middle. Only the second pass that Rivers has missed on today. It's 12 of 14 for 144 yards. He said he was efficient. That he is. He said he couldn't turn the ball over, and he hasn't. Big play. Double tight end set for the Wolfpack. Third and five. Through the hands of Peter Sandan. Hit off. The interception made by Claudius Osei. First big play of the game defensively for Florida State. Yeah, and you can't blame Rivers on that one. Tip ball. His wide receiver was open for the first down. They just ran a little combination route underneath. Five-step drop. Here comes the route underneath. He's wide open underneath. The ball had a little bit too must, much mustard on it. Peterson couldn't handle it, and Osei makes a good catch. First interception for Osei, the redshirt freshman. And Peterson's got to do a better job of that. So it's first and 10 at the 40 for Florida State. Ricks, plenty of time. Throws behind his man. It's picked off by the Wolfpack. Terrence Holt's got it. Holt out to the 41, a 20-yard return, so goes one way and right back the other. Yeah, and I don't know if there was a mix-up here with Ricks and Atrus Bell or not, but that was either a very, very poorly thrown pass by Chris Ricks or a miscommunication with him and Bell. Out of the shotgun, they got a chance to get back in this football game right now. Ricks lays it out. 
See what happens? Bell went to the outside. He threw it to the inside. That's a miscommunication between the two, and it's not the first time I've seen that, either in practice or in games with this team. You know, unlike the Maryland game that you talked about earlier where the defense created the turnover and then the offense came right back to make a run and four quick strikes to the end zone, not this time. Olin Hannum now in, number 19, rolling out. Cutting back and up to the 48-yard line. So Hannum, the senior out of Plain City, Utah, who spent a couple of years on a Mormon mission. And they will, as we have seen already, will put him in a number of spots offensively. See, and when you're the defensive coordinator and you see 19 and 17 in the same huddle, you say, uh-oh, where's he going to go? What are they going to look? You got the quarterback, Rivers over Senum. You got Hannon at tailback. There goes the quarterback splitting out direct snap now. Nobody's covering the quarterback. Hannum to the near. Throws. Complete and then drops. See how they rule it. That's an incomplete pass. Country was just popped by Leroy Smith. <laughs> I love watching this offense. It get, as a former defensive back, I can just tell you, trying to get ready for this offense would be a nightmare. They do so many different things. Smith made the great hit there. Pop it loose. But how'd you like to have to defend this offense? They just spread the field, different people, different personnel groupings. They get so many looks, you got to have Great communication in the secondary, too, and that, I guess, falls on the shoulders of Chris Hope to try to get that done. Rivers now swings it out. Robinson's got a first down. Fifth catch of the afternoon. They'll move the chains with just over a minute left. Yeah, Kendall Pope couldn't get to the outside there. They do a great job of, of what I call legal picks. And, and I don't believe any pick is legal, but they just never call it. So you see what happens up at the top of your screen. Tailback goes wide. There's the catch. Pope can't get to the outside because the tight end screened them off. Three receivers to the near side. Four receivers set overall. Robinson dancing around in the backfield. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Jeff Womble, along with Bradley Jennings, stopped in there. Now we're under a minute, and they have two, North Carolina State has two timeouts left. They need and to use one. Just taking one right now. Yep. So they'll talk about it with under a minute left. Don't forget. Coming up at the half, the Capital One halftime show. John Saunders, Terry Bowden, plenty of action, including the, uh, <laughs> Sorry to say, uh, you're a BC grad, the BC game this afternoon against Miami. And, uh, you know what? I am proud of BC for two reasons. Number one, they stepped up and played the number one team in the country, or number two, depending on your point of view, as hard as they could in a competitive game. But they also sat out maybe the, the top running back in the country because of a rules violation. And I've always believed that's what Boston College is all about, and I'm happy they did it. Last time they beat Miami, of course, the uh, Doug Flutie pass, and you had a hand in bringing him to, uh, to BC, didn't you? I'm not sure I did. I took, I took Doug and his parents around the campus, and Mrs. Flutie asked me what this building was, and I looked at it, and I looked at it, and I looked. I said, Mrs. Flutie, I'm not sure, but I think it's a library. <laughs> So I, despite the fact that you, you were showing me around campus, uh, he actually went there. Well, tomorrow the three reigning ladies from the podium at the World Championships last season in Vancouver, their first head-to-head -head competition of the season. Michelle Kwan, Marina Slutskaya, and Sarah Hughes, Skate Canada, coming your way at 4 Eastern, 3 Pacific here on ABC. Okay, Florida State has their nickel package in with three down linemen. They give a little bit up on the run, but they don't care. Four linebackers. Second and ten. Swings it out to Coach Ray Jackson. He's got a first down. Jennings knocks him out of bounds at the 27-yard line. That's another blown coverage from Mickey Andrews' group. Bryant McFadden, the corner, crashed inside. Pope couldn't get to the outside. And Robinson, I mean, Coach Ray Jackson, look at him. He's all by himself. Look at eight on the corner. He slips and falls. Two people took the inside route. That left Jackson all by himself. And that's what happens when you have a young defense. Gain of 18. Mickey's frustrated. First and 10 at the 27. Give it to Coach Ray Jackson. Got a huge hole up the middle. And he's got another NC State first down. 
Gain of 13 on the play. Chris Colmer sprung him with the block, the right tackle. They spread you wide. They get you thinking pass. They hand off inside the Jackson. They even make you think about the reverse because they run the wide receiver back behind. Nothing's easy with these guys. They make you think on every snap. And they hurry up to the line of scrimmage now. First and 10 from inside the 15. Out of the gun. And he threw that one away. And Florida State brought some heat that time. Good Bullware and Robinson going at it. And look at Rivers runs over to the sideline while he had a moment to talk with Galbraith. Okay, third time inside of red zone, folks. Excuse me, fourth time. It's three for three the first three times. 30 seconds left in the half and one timeout. Play action for Rivers. Over the middle, complete inside the 10, down to the 9. Jericho Contrary with the catch. And NC State will stop the clock. There, there's that legal pick again. Contrary in motion. Rubs off the tight end. Willie Wright. So NC State up by a touchdown. 21 seconds left until half, trying to get more, and then go talk about it. Must have been some cookies you left, Santa. I didn't leave them cookies. I left them cheese. Ah, the power of cheese. <laughs> Me, you can dunk, but you can't dip. Your dip is gone, baby. What are you talking about? No dip. Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Let me tell you something, Bill. I put the hip in chip. Watch this. With the bite-sized, bowl-shaped design for the perfect dip every time. New Tostito Scoops. Whoa. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> this is my house. Yes, it is. No, this is my house. You guys got to go. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. Third and four coming up for the Wolfpack. Up by a touchdown. They are out of timeouts here in the first half. Rivers stepping up, throwing on the run behind Robinson, incomplete. He may have been able to run that one in. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he knew he should have run it. That's a good call, Terry Gannon. As soon as he got rid of the ball, he hit himself in the helmet. He could have walked into the end zone there, and they're going to have to settle for a field goal. And remember what Chuck Amato told us. You don't beat Florida State in the field goal. But I think we'll take three out of four. Look at He could have walked into the end zone. Instead, he throws the ball behind Ray Robinson. Placed it down just outside the 15. They'll call it a try from 25 yards for Adam Piker. And it is good. Inside the right upright. So the Wolfpack again on the board. They've got a 10-point lead with just 12 seconds left until half. They have basically moved the ball at will against the Florida State defense. Let's take another look at that incomplete pass from behind. River steps back. They were looking for a little pick bay. They had number 80 right there, right open. He steps up. Now, if he keeps going, he's going to get a pick from the referee and walk in. Instead, he throws it behind Robinson, and they're forced to kick the field goal. So the interception by Florida State, Ricks threw it right back. Terrence Holt came up with one, and NC State able to drive down the field. 25-yard field goal from Adam Kiker. And plays with just a minute 49 off the clock. Yeah, if you're Chuck Amato, you, you got to be real happy. Offensively, you've done everything you could possibly do. And defensively, you started out a little bit shaky, but since then, you stopped Florida State twice in a row, forcing the punt. Your offense bled the clock down to 12 seconds, so you need to kick off, play some special teams, and get into the locker room at halftime. And Mickey Andrews is going to have to make some adjustments. But all NC State in the second quarter, 17 to nothing. They outscored Florida State. 
And the second quarter has been their big been quarter. Florida State's big quarter. Going to squib this one. Alfonso Thorpe fields it at his own nine. Knocked down and out of bounds at the 21 yard line. He got seven Four seconds line. until half. Olin Hannum, he's in on everything, isn't he? <laughs> My gosh. I love that kid. Dellback, quarterback, special teams, wide receiver. When he plays quarterback, they've got a whole special package set up just for him. So if you're Florida State, what do you do right now? Probably throw the ball down the field. Nope. Or run it out. Those are your two options. They chose the latter. <laughs> Greg Jones <laughs> across the 25, and that will be the last play of the first half. Capital One halftime show coming up from New York in just a moment. NC State with the lead, 24 to 14. Back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Horsepower Nissan Pathfinder. We've got to be nuts driving cross country with those two. Yeah, it'll be fine. Like twists? Try the Pepsi Twist in regular and diet. A lemon twist on that great Pepsi taste. Mitsubishi Montero Sport. Right now, pay zero down, zero interest, and zero payments till 2003. This is ABC News Channel 27. The Capital One Halftime Show, presented by Capital One, who asks, what's in your wallet? From Times Square Stadium in New York, John Saunders and Terry Bowden. Welcome, we hope you're enjoying the first half, second half still to come. As we're going to show you a little bit later on, the Miami Hurricanes had a tremendous struggle today in their game against Boston College. So that, you would think, opened the door for Nebraska, perhaps, to pass them in each poll for number one. And Lord only knows what that would do to the Bowl Championship Series standing. But Nebraska starts quickly. Watch Eric Cross, just a great man with the feet. Both these teams require their quarterback to run the ball. Nobody runs as a quarterback better than Eric Crouch. Al Roberson, though, gets picked off by Willie Amos. And Nebraska adds to the lead. They would miss the point after, so a 13-0 lead. But back comes Kansas State. Al Roberson, 34 yards to Aaron Lockett for the touchdown with the extra point. 
Kansas State has the lead at halftime. Well, with Kansas State, just like against Oklahoma, the good defenses will stop their running game. Uh, they have to be able to throw the ball over top. L. Roberson today has done that very well. And as we mentioned, you'll find out a little bit later on, this is good news right now for Miami because the Canes did struggle. You see the numbers on crowd. Memphis facing Tennessee. Casey Clawson looking for Jason Witten. 17 yards. Did he get that foot in? Doesn't matter. The officials say he did. Touchdown. And then Clawson again to Troy Fleming. They take a 14 to nothing lead. Casey Clawson, four touchdown passes as they're rolling in this non-conference matchup. Well, if you're from around Tennessee, you know this game's always close, but Tennessee always wins 17 out of 18. No, 18 out of 19 now. All right, 42-21 there. Oregon and UCLA. Some of you watching this game and watching Joey Harrington make his run for the Heisman Trophy. Six yards for the touchdown here. Oregon with a 7-0 lead. Then Maurice Morris carries 27 yards. He's going to get that down to UCLA's three-yard line. It sets up another touchdown a couple of plays later as UCLA is trying to avoid losing for the third consecutive time. Harris has a touchdown run for UCLA, but 14-10, they are down. Well, UCLA had to lose. Deshaun Foster was held out this game, and that's a big blow for them. Washington facing Oregon State. Ken Simonson with two touchdowns and a touchdown reception as well. How about this one? Washington thought they had a date right now with Washington State that might decide the Pac-10. they got to survive this one against Oregon State. Well, this is kind of a shocker. You know, you'd, you have to route Washington to beat them because if it's close in the last of the game, Washington's going to come back. But Ken Simonson got a couple of touchdowns, but still not much yardage. The way things are playing out in the BCS, there's still going to be some people argue about who should be one, who should be two. And you're going to hear a lot of those voices coming from Utah. Well, this is a BYU team right now that is unbeaten. The only one left unbeaten, if you count Nebraska and Miami as well. And facing Wyoming today, Bramlett nine yards on this touchdown run. And then Brandon Doman, 16 yards here for the touchdown to get BYU on top 17 to 10. They would go up 20 to 10, but Wyoming comes storming back before halftime. Casey Bramlett, touchdown run and a touchdown pass. This one tied at 20 apiece. Well, they're a really good team. The most dominant, I mean, Mount Bit Mount, balanced team on offense, balanced running, balanced passing. They average 50 points a game. Luke Staley almost 100 <laughs> yards already, and it's just halftime. NC State facing Florida State. NC State in the driver's seat as far as the ACC goes, but they could stumble against NC State. Chris Richard to Tallman Gardner for the touchdown. Ties the game at seven apiece. But NC State was able to move the ball at will. Ray Robinson from three yards out, and NC State was back on top, 21-14. They had led also at 7-0. Well, Chris Ricks is playing pretty good. A couple of touchdown passes, only one pick, but the defense has been undependable, independable at Florida State all year. Jericho Cottry with a touchdown run in the contest as well, and you see the numbers on Rivers closing in on 200 already. Penn State, Illinois for Joe Park. Could it be his fourth consecutive win after starting the season? 0-4. Bruce Branch says, yes, it can. 71 yards on this punt return. And those of you out there who said the game had passed Joe Paterno by, guess what? He's closing in on his fourth straight win. This team amazes me. Once you start winning, everybody gets confidence. Everybody finds a way to win. Watch this halfback pass. Eric McCoo throws it to Tony Johnson. 63 yards. A little bad coverage there. <laughs> Knocked him down and Ray took it in there. 14-7. And adding to that lead, Eric McCoo has a touchdown run to go with that. So 21 to 7 is now the score as they've gone to halftime. And for Penn State, just take a look at what the offense has done, and this will tell you why he has turned this thing around. 492 yards, 20 yards a game, 216 what they did in the first four. Guess what? If they win this game, very much in the hunt for a bull. Georgia Tech facing Virginia. George Godsey with two touchdown runs there. Auburn trailing Georgia 14-7. David Green has two touchdown passes. And Louisville beats up on Houston 34-10 the final. Dave Ragon with two touchdown passes. D.J. Patterson a touchdown run. This is the Capital One Halftime Show. Stick around. Back with more in a moment. Great. Credit card bill. Look at these fees. Honey? One rate for purchases, higher rate for cash advances, and those telemarketers. Relax. We switched to Capital One's new no hassle card. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Introducing Capital One's new no hassle platinum card. No balance transfer fees, no telemarketing, one low fixed rate. Huh? Honey? What's in your wallet? 
Oh, the wonderful thing about children is it never occurs to them that their dreams might not come true. My dream has come true. With hard work and some good financial advice, I just opened my third child care center. We take care of hundreds of children every day. Our children are our future. They just don't know it yet. Smart financial services from Mutual of Omaha. Helping plan successful futures for over 90 years. This is the Capital One Halftime Show from here in New York at Times Square. The second half still to come, but let's talk about the number one team in the nation, the Miami Hurricanes. Everyone knew their strength of schedule was horrendous up until this week. Things getting extremely tough down the stretch. And it would start today with Boston College. Larry Coker knew he'd be in for a battle, and he was. Didn't expect this, so Ken Dorsey picked off four times in the game. He had four INTs coming into today. Yeah, he was very impatient, throwing the ball badly all day. and never got better, even to the end of the game. Brian St. Pierre, though, nine yards to Sean Ryan. Boston College within a couple, then late. Going for the touchdown and the lead, and perhaps the win. It bounces around, picked off by Matt Walters, and Ed Reed grabs it and goes the rest of the way, so Miami survives the scare. Well, they still play great defense. You know the old saying, just win, baby, but this is not a very pretty win. And five turnovers in the game. Dorsey. 20 of 41, 222 yards, and four interceptions. You wonder if Nebraska can win big against Kansas State, if in fact Nebraska would go to number one in the polls. Well, people will vote an undefeated team over another undefeated team if they play better. That could happen. And if not for Clinton Portis today, Miami would have been nowhere. Had a terrific day. Bob Stoops for Oklahoma. His eyes on Nebraska in a rematch in the Big 12 championship game. Nate Hibble to Antoine Savage. Oklahoma comes back from down 10 to nothing. And then Matt McCoy with a lateral here to Tim Duncan. Doesn't look like he got in for the touchdown. Absolutely not. And this was a fourth down. He would not have been able to get the ball for a first down. It would have turned over, but it didn't happen. They got the win. Didn't matter in the end. But Oklahoma's defense, again, phenomenal. You wonder, though, in a 10 team game, if that call might have turned things around. You see Hibble, 25 of 38, almost 200 yards. A couple of touchdowns, and he rushed for a touchdown as well. Kansas facing Texas. Nobody's been better than Chris Sims at quarterback since losing to Oklahoma. 68 yards here to Roy Williams for a 14-0 lead. And then later, Sims hooks up with Cedric Benson for 60 yards. He's been terrific. Well, they're looking for an at-large bid to the BCS. Their defense is third in the nation. But Chris Sims has been on fire since losing to Oklahoma. But this man, Cedric Benson, he's the best running back, I think, since Ricky Williams. You see, he catches this one 60 yards for a touchdown. 28 carries, 213 yards, and two touchdowns. And again, we talk about Oklahoma facing Nebraska in the Big 12 championship game. Perhaps if they go there and lose there, Texas with just one loss, despite the fact that loss was to Oklahoma, might get the at-large bid. With all these superstars, they're a pretty team. People like this kind of team and would like to see them in a BCS game. And they will travel people as well. People like that. Minnesota against Michigan. Michigan last week, a loser in the last second of Michigan State. John Navarre hands off to Chris Perry, who gives it back to Calvin Bell. 19 yards in the reverse. Michigan with a 21-10 lead. And then Chris Perry was not done for the day. From six yards out, 31-10, the Wolverines still in front in the Big Ten. Well, when they can run the football, they win. They had 172 yards out of their two tailbacks, B.J. Askew and Chris Perry. But Navarre, very critical today. I mean, Lloyd Carr, very critical of John Navarre. They did not have a good game. No, he didn't. 12 of 22, 144 yards, and was picked off as well. West Virginia against Syracuse. you got to find Dwight Freeney. He gets to West Virginia quarterback Brad Lewis. The fumbles recovery. That's an NCAA record. 15 and a half sacks for Freeney. And then Andre Brinson blocks this West Virginia punt. Barry Baker recovers this one. Syracuse in a little bit of a tussle, but they have now won eight consecutive games, 24 to 13. Mungro with 21 carries for 78 yards. Up next for Syracuse, Miami. And they play the kind of defense, I think, to give Miami fits, and they're playing this game. I think down in Sy down in Miami, they're a good battle for the, for the Miami Hurricanes. Kevin Jones, 21 carries, 155 yards, as Virginia Tech ends a two-game losing streak. This is the Capital One Halftime Show. By all appearances, I'm a server. But look deeper, and you'll see that I'm an entire company. A direct one-to-one -one relationship that adds value instead of cost. I'm just the part of the company you'll be looking at when you realize that I'm not just another pretty face. I'm a better way of doing things. Enterprise systems that are easy to build, easy to own, easy as Dell. Dell PowerEdge servers use Intel Pentium 3 Xeon processors. 
Americans have places to go, things to do, so they go Midas. Alignment, we do that. Air conditioning, we do that. Brakes, we do that. So for total car care by certified technicians, who does it all? Midas, we do that. At BASF, we don't make the car. We make it more reflective. We don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. The Capital One Halftime Show, presented by Capital One, who asks, what's in your wallet? The Atlantic Coast Conference. 23 players selected in the 2001 NFL Draft. Three players honored as academic All-Americans. Heisman Trophy and Lombardi Award winners. 13 players honored as All-Americans. Pure power. Pure tradition, pure thrills. The ACC, accelerate your dreams. There are places on Earth where the chase never ends, where the need to know is an insatiable appetite, and the laboratory is a limitless realm that we are free to hunt. Pushing back the frontiers of science, engineering, and technology. North Carolina State University. Knowledge is the prey. We are the hunters. Wednesday. You're fired. What? Damon, help her out. Are you sure you're not happy about this? Of course not. <laughs> then the kids are in bed. Time for love. According to Jim. You smell so good. <laughs> Did you have fries on the way home? <laughs> New family comedy, ABC Wednesday. See you then. Next Saturday here on ABC, 3.30 Eastern Time, regional coverage. Some will see Syracuse try and derail Miami's national championship hunt. Some will see Oklahoma take on Texas Tech in the Big 12 or in the Pac-10, Washington State and Washington, perhaps for the winner of the conference. Or in the Big Ten, Michigan takes on Wisconsin. Michigan still on their way, perhaps, to the Big Ten title. Purdue against Ohio State. Eddie George sheds a tear as he has his number retired, and Steve Bellisari would make it a very eventful day. Seven yards to Chris Vance. Ohio State had a 35-9 lead over Purdue, and that's the way it ends up. Bellisari, 14 of 20, 262 yards and three touchdowns. Well, they're still in a chance to uh, win the Big Ten. They've got to beat Illinois, beat uh, Michigan to have a top of the Big Ten. Indiana over Michigan State, 37 to 28. Antoine Randall L becoming the NCAA leader for rushing for quarterbacks, 3,645 yards. Right now, let's take you back out to your second half. The sun beginning the set here at Doak Campbell Stadium. The Marching Chiefs celebrating their 40th anniversary of the Florida State Marching Band. Entertaining here at halftime, Patrick Dunnigan, the director of the band. Entertaining first half so far, too. NC State with a 10-point lead trying to pull off the upset. 24-14, the second half straight ahead. I hate grapes. Green and purple and seedless. Sure, they taste great. But on a supermarket floor, they can make for nasty slips and falls. Hi, I'm Al Mangoni, a safety specialist with Liberty Mutual Insurance. There's no reason the supermarket floor should ever be a dangerous place. So we're working on non-slip flooring and other materials to keep you safe. Liberty Mutual. It's more than insurance. It's insurance in action. I also hate bananas. Wednesday on Drew, it's special guest stars, the Blue Man Group, and it's live in three time zones. Boy, Drew, when you finish a meal, you finish a meal. <laughs> it's Drew Carey live Wednesday at 9, 8 central on ABC. 25 of the world's most beautiful women in the world's sexiest lingerie. The Victoria's Secret Fashion Show, Thursday at 9, 8 central on ABC.
help you? Yeah, we're just wondering, why don't you tell people there's arsenic in cigarette smoke? Why don't you? All just focus on the positive, cause positive's the way you ought to be. Why don't, don't we all stop being so derogative to the big tobacco companies? We asked, is nicotine addictive? We told you that it's not. Okay, then maybe everyone just likes it a whole lot. So why destroy the research? Do you think that they're afraid? No, we're just getting ready for a ticker tape parade. His tumor was malignant. But look, he's not indignant. He knows you got to just stay focused on the positive. They're not marketing to teens. They're reaching out to our youth. Oh, let's stay Security. Has bad credit stopped you from getting a new car? Call the number that can finance you. Call 1-800-471-2266. If your credit's been damaged by divorce, liens, or judgments, call 1-800-471-2266. You could be driving in just 24 hours. It's fast, it's easy, totally automated, confidential, and it's free. Call toll-free now. 1-800-471-2266. There's no worries about being turned down. Start driving today. Call 1-800-471-2266. This is ABC News Channel 27. The first half, a bright one for the NC State offense. They have a 10-point lead, 24-14 over the number 10 team in the nation. Terry Gannon, Mike Mayock back with you. The Morgan Stanley well-connected storyline. Mike? Uh, Philip Rivers has dominated the football game from his quarterback position. Look at Chris Rick's four completions in the first half. Two of them, though, for long touchdowns. And obviously the two wide receivers from Florida State have done a nice job. Folks, look at the total yard. Who would have thought a 98-yard differential favor North Carolina State? Now Florida State won the toss. They deferred to the second half. So it's NC State and a Piker who will handle the duties here, kicking off to Profonso Thorpe and P.K. Sand. A couple of youngsters back deep. Freshman for the Seminoles. Second half underway. Profonso Thorpe. 